Meteorologist James Zahara here in the Storm Track 8 Weather Center. We're with you right now on the uh, weather app, our WQAD, actually WQAD 8 Plus app right now. And uh, we want to give you a little update on what's been going on weather-wise across eastern Iowa and northwestern Illinois. Pretty much tell you what's going to be going on as we go through the rest of the night and more importantly, uh, what we expect going into the weekend. But most of this time we'll be talking about some of the active weather that has been going on across the area. And we'll kind of bisect some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms that have been going on in some of our hometowns. So let's kind of go right into it here and go right to the live radar itself because we do have at least several warnings that have been popping up across the area. This is actually the newest one uh, that has popped up and we'll kind of zoom in here a little bit. Talk about this severe thunderstorm warning that is located for parts of Muscatine and even around Louisa County, that includes uh, towns like Columbus Junction, Lone Tree, and Riverside. Uh, we're talking about this severe thunderstorm warning until about 845. There is potential for some large hail here. Estimated size, actually over a, a quarter, uh, quarter, quarter size. That's enough just to cause enough damage. And there is that possibility, you can see in the wind speed, what we could get a good rush of wind out of this as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of uh, break this down even further and kind of talk about some of the hail size that may be going on. Now, keep in mind that where we saw that uh, warning uh, polygon, uh, we're not showing a real complete line of where this actual hail is actually taking place. It's kind of in a very low, small located area in uh, Washington County that you can see there. But you can see where uh, Columbus Junction is located. So this is what we're going to be kind of keeping an eye on. Right now, uh, we're seeing some bright orange in there, likely seeing uh, possible like nickel size hail. Uh, not so much in that yellow. Maybe a little speck that we see just south of Washington itself, uh, but nothing really widespread. So keep that in mind. I think what we're dealing with here is that conditions are just right for the hail growth to reach over a quarter of inch, uh, a quarter size inch uh, uh, when it comes to uh, that particular line. So that is a, the hail size. The probability of seeing some hail, and it doesn't have to be uh, just the quarter size, it can actually be any size hail. And you can see right there in that, uh, that nice, nice magenta color west of Crossfordsville, uh, that is actually indicating some, some hail that is definitely falling and very likely reaching the ground. So that is why we have uh, that warning out for areas east of that particular line from parts of Louisa County and even around Muscatine. So Conesville and Columbus Junction, it makes a lot of sense as well. Let's go with velocity mode because that's one of the other things that they have addressed as far as some wind. Nothing really impressive. So from this line, as it continues to generally make its way off toward the east-northeast, uh, you may get a good rush of wind first, then some rain, and then maybe some hail to go with it as well. Okay, so that's uh, one part of the main line that we're going to keep an eye on. And I want to make sure on the actual uh, speed and direction of this. And it is, uh, let's see here, it is moving toward the east at around 50 miles an hour. So why do I bring that up? Well, let's go ahead and kind of zoom out just a little bit more because you can see that's where the Quad Cities is. And I think this may be trying to even nudge a little bit more north. So I, um, if we had to, let's see, even put, let me see if I can get this on here, the distance that we have, and it should probably give a time to. I'm going to stretch this out all the way to we get to the heart of the Quad Cities itself. So it's about 53 miles away. The storm is moving around 50 miles an hour. So I would say just over an hour, uh, maybe hour 10 minutes, if that holds together, that same speed, then we're talking about sometime around 9.15 or so reaching the Quad Cities itself. Hopefully not a point where we actually have to uh, talk about any warnings that may be going on when it comes to this part of the storm itself, okay? So let's kind of wind this out a little bit more and talk about another warning that we see to our north, not in our viewing area, uh, but something once again that uh, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on is this one located right there, uh, now taking place across Iowa City itself. 
And you can see the plenty of heavy rain that's going on with it, some strokes of lightning as well. And that continues also to make its way uh, off toward the east. So we'll be watching us in, in Cedar County uh, from Clarence to Tipton, Bennett, Rochester, West Branch, and maybe even going into Wilton, safe to say, if this also is continuing to make its way off to the east, which it is at the same speed, I would say in the next uh, half, I think 45 minutes or so, half an hour, uh, you'll very likely be impacted uh, by this part of the storm as well. Okay, so that's kind of what we're dealing with here uh, with these storms that are going on across the area. I'm going to try and extend my map out just a wee bit more so I can go from this to this. And there we go. So there we go. So uh, those are the two warnings that we are uh, now taking place across the area. Okay. Let's go and actually, man, I mentioned I want to go ahead and address the other clusters of storms that are going on. And that's kind of what we're dealing with, folks, is really clusters of storms that will continue to march from west to east as we go through the rest of the evening as well as the overnight. This doesn't have a warning with it, but you can see is now the northern side of it actually making its way into Bureau County. Maybe a few sprinkles now taking place around Princeton and then stretching its way southward near Tiskawa, maybe starting to see some steady light rain. And then farther south and west as you go right near Bradford in Stark County, that's when we start seeing some little strokes of lightning that are going on as well. That can, <clears throat> excuse me, that continues to make its way uh, off toward the east. So really not too concerned about that wave that we have right here. It's really though this wave that we see located uh, just out to our west. I'm going to put a loop on this and let everyone get a chance to see how this is uh, transforming here. And if you got a chance to watch um, our evening newscast, our five and six, and we show you the future track, it is pretty much right on that we would see this part of the storm located west of the river to be right where it would be about eight o'clock or so. And that's kind of what we're looking at uh, going into uh, the next couple of hours or so. I know we're going to, we, right now the time is 8.07, and I want to let people know on our 8 Plus app, we're gonna act, I'm going to go in as long as I want here. I'm going to just keep on going here, maybe another, um, going to maybe about 15 after. Let's see what happens with that. And then if we need to do another update, I'll, I'll let you know uh, during, our, um, during our network broadcasting that's taking place. So just want to give everyone a heads up of what we're dealing with. This is the line that we're dealing with right now that continues to make its way east. This is going to be the strongest part. I think one, the strongest cluster of storms that we expect to see as we go through the rest of the night. I want to go ahead and get a future track on this if I can. And I'm sorry that it, the picture just went out on me. I'm going to try. I'm scrolling down to uh, the future track itself. And we'll pop it up here in just a second here. It's going to pop up. And give us a second here. The beauty of technology. It's going to happen here in just a second. There we go. And I'm going to stop it right about, there's about 9 o'clock. I'm going to stop it, go to about 8 o'clock. And you can see how well-defined future track. This is our house model. How well it's actually doing right about 8 o'clock there. And I move it to about 9. You can see the northern fringe of that storm makes its way through the Quad Cities. And then the rest of it kind of evolves even more so the farther south. By the time we get to about, I'm going to move it to about 11 p.m., you can see that most of our counties in our viewing area will be seeing some type of shower thunderstorm activity. And then as we get to about the, as I move this even more so, to about like 4 or 5 a.m., you can see how most of the activity is going to be off to our south and east. How much rainfall we could potentially get? Once again, are we you know, trying to... Uh, give a good idea as far as the cluster of storms that will be taking place from now to about near dawn tomorrow. And I would say we're going to be averaging in most of our hometowns about a half an inch, but we can't rule out some very heavy rain in a handful of our hometowns, maybe getting over, well over, maybe an inch of rain. So that's kind of what we're looking at with these cluster of showers and thunderstorms that are actually taking place across the area. And once this wave moves on by, then we should be looking pretty good, not only as we go throughout our Friday as skies improve, but also heading into the all-important weekend 
as well. So I'm going to actually do this here. I'm actually I'm looking pretty good here as far as the, act, um, the activity that we're noticing, uh, the data that we've had so far. But once again, there is a possibility that some of those strong thunderstorms that's trying to produce a little hail, some of those warnings could extend even farther eastward. Those polygons possibly around the immediate quad cities. So do be prepared about that. And of course, any updates that we do have for you, we'll let you know right there on WQAD News 8, right there in the bottom of your screen to give you the latest update on any of those warnings and the details that are going on with those warnings as well. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. And we will certainly talk to you later.